So uh, now uh, all of the uh, homework or the uh, preparation is done. I will call row, row. So uh, so many papers here. Let me find the agenda. Marcus Crawley is here. Jeff Tambra. The president. Good. Terrell Gamble is present, uh, uh, is uh, in remote attendance uh, with Just Cause. Andrea Dawson is present. present. Benjamin Scott. Here. Good. In person. Uh, Jill Broadhurst. Here. Good. Jill is uh, is uh, attending remotely for Just Cause. And Cole Sexton Here. is uh, in person also. Moving on to uh, uh, agenda item number two, approve the meeting agenda. I... I hear a motion to approve this agenda. I have a question about the agenda. So uh, since we have the benefit of legal counsel, so this is the evening of um, electing the chair and the vice chair, which is item seven in this agenda. And um, my question is, is, is the protocol, I guess is what I'm going to call it, normally that you... Uh, the first order of business um, is to elect the chair of the committee. Or is that at the discretion of the current chair to put it where they want in the agenda? I just. Yeah, it, it, it's at the current. Oh. It's at, Pardon me? God. It's at the current chair's uh, discretion. Okay. Well, since you brought up the, the uh, topic, I want to explain that. Uh, I uh, want to give the next chairperson a clean slate and not burden them with a bunch of old troubles that have uh, hounded us this mm -hmm. whole entire last year. So I want to uh, clean up those old troubles and then we will elect the chairperson that can uh, proceed with a clean slate. So, I ask again, is there a motion to approve this agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. And I'll second it. Thank you. So the agenda is uh, approved. Uh, public comment. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Crawley, I think that the- uh, You have to take a vote, has right? Been, it's been moved and seconded, but the uh, committee uh, hasn't taken a vote. Uh, Whoever is talking, Ask me, give me your name and ask me to give, grant you the floor and I'll be happy to do so, but I uh, want to know who's talking. This is, this is Terrell Gamble, I would like to speak. Thank you, Terrell, go ahead. Uh, I would like to make a motion to change the agenda. To change the agenda? Yeah, to change the agenda order. Uh, well, Terrell, uh, I, agenda item number three is a public comment on anything that's not on the agenda. I understand that, oh, right? So, so, so uh, my, my motion, is we have, we have a motion that's been up to approve the agenda and one that's second it. I would like to make a motion to change the agenda order. Uh, well, Terrell, I'm sorry to say that your motion is out of order. This is... Uh, this public comment thing, uh, uh, agenda item, is for anybody to talk about something that is not on the agenda. So, uh, We're still on item two. No, we... Uh, we, we haven't voted. We haven't voted on the agenda yet. He's making an amend. He's trying to make oh. an amendment to the... Oh, yeah. I stand corrected. Thank you. Uh, Carol moves to change the agenda. What change do you want? I would like to move item number seven, item number four. Mm 
these will be the ones that are on the agenda right now. So it's an, an amendment. I would like to swap item seven and four. No, approved minutes from June 12th. Does it make any sense? But we're still on two. So he wants to change the order. The order is out of order of how we normally conduct the meetings. Could it get moved so, to five? Just so you know. move it to five. Okay. <clears throat> A friendly amendment. Move it to five after we approve the minutes. Okay, sounds good to me. We need a, is, we need a second. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask for John. Committees for 20 years. John or Palmer, are you still here? I'm still with you. Okay. Uh, is uh, Terrell's motion to uh, move uh, item uh, seven to uh, position uh, five. Is that in order? Yes, it is. He's offering a you you asked for a motion to approve the agenda. You got a motion. You got a second. So now the floor is open. And as a committee member, he has offered uh, an amendment to the motion, which is to approve a. a uh, um, an agenda with uh, item seven moved to item four. Okay. All right. Is um, so. Carol has moved to move agenda item number seven to the position after agenda. Item number four is, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, Jeff seconds the motion. Is there any discussion? Okay, I have a discussion, something I want to say about it. Like I said before, I think that uh, the way the agenda is right now, is going to give the next chairperson a much easier way to be a good chairperson. It's not going to inherit this trouble that we've had for the last 12 months. And that is a reason that I have selected this. Uh, oh, this sequence. Uh, is there anybody else that has a comment about I have, a, I have a comment right and my comment is that we are an hour into this meeting and we've barely gotten past roll right uh I, I appreciate the opportunity to serve on this board uh as a former uh peralta student and as a community member right uh but i find uh sort of the length uh just the easy part of the, the section of the agenda uh, to be untenable. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that has a comment about Terrell's motion? Hearing none, we will vote on Terrell's motion. All in favor of moving agenda item number seven to uh, to the position after agenda item number four. Um, we're going to do a uh, roll. You have to do a roll call vote. Roll call vote on this. Jill Jill Broadhurst. No. Uh, Jill voted no. Jeff? Yes. Ben? Uh, no. Marcus? No. Andrea? Yes. Yes. Cole? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. So uh, there are one, two, three votes for yes. No, there's four. Okay. You, you forgot to vote. Yep. Terrell's vote. Okay, and Terrell vote is yes. Made a motion for giving two votes. Well, yeah, yeah, he does have to vote. He does have to vote. You're correct. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, just to call the name. Okay. So, uh, therefore, we will move. So you have to call he didn't vote. Yeah, you have to ask for his vote, for Terrell's vote. Okay. Terrell? Vote is yes. You vote yes. Okay. So, Terrell's vote motion carries uh, four to three. So, we will move that. Uh, the uh, is there any oh oh okay so um, uh, with that motion do we approve oh. the agenda as Terrell modified it? Looking for a uh, motion. Okay, let's let's vote. Okay, so uh, okay, so okay. So, I move. Wait, wait, do we need, is do this we need to do this? No, I'm not sure didn't. we need to do this. It was that's the, that's the, it's the same vote. Uh, it's so, the same okay, vote. So we move. It's the same vote. Other than that, uh, let's talk about if, whether the agenda is approved. So we've never voted on whether the agenda. Items are approved. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have the motion to approve the agenda items, and it's been seconded. Any other comments? All right. Then uh, we will vote on uh, approving the agenda items. All in favor of approving agenda items? Say yes. 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 All, yes. all against. Okay. The agenda items stand. So agenda item number three is public comment. Is there any public comments? Okay. Hearing none, I have a public comment. And uh that is, I received a letter from Jeff about Brown Act compliance in our meetings. I think that uh, Jeff's letter to me is spot on. And uh, I'm not going to read the letter. It's not part of the agenda uh, package, but I uh, want to mention uh, some of the points that he's making. And um, because we can apply them to uh, this meeting, and, uh, and they also apply to uh, past meetings and future meetings. I have a, I have a question. Uh, seeing, seeing that you're the chair of the board, I don't understand how you can Carol, also provide Carol, it. You do not have the floor right now. So I understand, I understand I've, that. I've got the floor. So, um, uh, the, uh, let's see, who are we talking about? Uh, one of the comments that he made is uh, regarding remote apparent, uh, appearances. And I did want to uh, mention that just like uh, uh, John Palmer and I were talking about at the beginning, uh, uh, right before this meeting, that uh, the Brown Act uh, provides for remote attendance without publishing the, the without the need to publish the uh, remote location uh, with certain uh, provisions, and that is if there's a central a singular location for the meeting, if it's open to the public, and if there's a quorum. And uh, we have been uh, achieving that in this meeting, but there ha it has come up 
on, on a number of occasions. And so I just wanted to say that uh, we appear to be in compliance uh, with uh, the uh, remote attendance. Um, and uh, continuing, so uh, the uh, So uh, Jeff also uh, suggests that we have an ongoing attendance record chart. And so how can this be in public comment? I don't understand. Well, I'm continuing. And uh, and I think that's an excellent idea. Uh, so uh, we should get a uh, have a chart on the website of remote attendance. And uh, we will be doing that uh, once we uh, get past the uh, the uh, category chart that we're presently working on. Uh, Jeff uh, mentioned um, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, in uh, July that neither uh, Yusef or Benjamin uh, had their audio and video on, and uh, and I think that was a uh, in in error because uh, Yusef didn't even attend, and uh, Benjamin did have his audio and video on, and on a number of occasions I said, uh, Ben, can you hear what uh, Cole is saying? He says, Yeah, and so uh, I think that uh, that is uh, uh, beside the point. So anyway, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, Jeff's, uh, I wanted to acknowledge Jeff's letter and the importance of uh, complying with the Brown Act. Is there anybody else that has a comment about uh, for public? Uh, uh, Chair Crowley, I, I, I would just say, um, is this maybe, John, maybe Palmer? I, this John Palmer this is John, speaking? This, this is John Palmer speaking. Okay. Um, I, I I would uh, um, slight, take a slightly different read of the of the Brown Act than you did with respect to remote attendance. Um, my read of the Brown Act is that remote attendance is only possible if you either satisfy the just cause or emergency exceptions or if you publish your location and post the agenda at that location, um, but that the section that you cited um, only discusses whether the committee can use a teleconferencing platform and actually doesn't specifically address how committee members can attend remotely. Okay, well, your read and my read is different, and uh, we can uh, talk more about it in the future. Uh, and uh, that is another reason why I uh, recommend that uh, that uh, this oversight committee have an independent legal counsel so that we can have uh, another point of view about that. Okay, so uh, moving on. Uh, agenda item number four is approve the minutes from uh, June the 12th. Uh, is, is there a motion to approve the uh, minutes from last month? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. Okay. Uh, I think there are the minutes need some corrections. And um, I uh, ask that the corrections be done. And uh, here are the corrections that I request. So many papers here. <laughs> uh, 
for minutes. Okay. So here is the original minutes. Here are my uh, minutes. Okay. Uh, number, my first comment is uh, on the uh, chart of attendance. It says uh, uh, Benjamin Scott online. So from here on out, in accordance with uh, what uh, Jeff Cambra suggests, I think that an online should uh, be uh, remote attendance and it should also state the reason for remote attendance. In this particular case, we would say uh, present remote attendance excused for just cause. And that would be uh, the uh, attendance category for Benjamin. Uh, Jill Broadhurst, uh, similar. She is present, remote attendance, excused for emergency. So uh, those two corrections should be made. Uh, uh, in the actual notes, <clears throat> he uh, says that uh, uh, Scott attended online, and once again, it should uh, include the uh, uh, the excused for just cause. And Jill brought her excused for emergency. Uh, the uh, agenda item number eight. Uh, the agenda item says, I'm um, uh, just going to read the part of the last sentence here. It says, uh, the next meeting agenda and action item, but Craw Chair Crawley refused. And I'm going to uh, uh, strike out refused. And I'm going to say explain that this topic needs to be developed. Uh, and uh, that uh, the uh, needs to be developed. And there are some mistakes that need to be corrected. And did you get that, Shanova? Yeah, I'm getting it now. Okay, do you need me to uh, pause? No, this is a recording. I can always okay. go back. Okay, and then uh, on agenda item number 10, says uh, the last sentence says Sexton expressed an urge to resolve this item once and for all, not one and for all. So those are the, uh, the uh, corrections that I suggest for the minutes. Uh, now, Andrea, uh, so Andrea, you have the floor now. Okay, so just a, so since we're getting into this much detail, uh, I did on, on attendance. So it was my recollection that actually that Jill Broadhurst used just cause. It was child care for taking her child to the airport. I thought that that was what it was. So. It was an emergency. I, this is what I recall. So if we're going to get into this kind of detail, I think it matters because emergency is different than just cause. Yes, we did have a discussion on that. And um, my recollection is that uh, we decided that it was emergency because okay. of family. Okay. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Any, okay. Anyway, I guess we could get a legal uh, on okay. that. Just review. Review. Yeah, okay. we can just review the tape. Yeah. So, are there any other corrections for the minutes? Hearing none, 
Uh, I believe that now is the time that we vote to approve the minutes as corrected. All in favor of uh, approving the, mo the minutes as I corrected them, say aye. 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 Okay, uh, so that establishes the corrected minutes. I abstain. Okay, so uh, the uh, now we have the uh, leadership election and selection committee and uh, vice chair. Uh, we are going to uh, follow the Robert's rules of order on this. Uh, we, I think my recollection is that we have uh, diverged a little bit from Robert's rules in the past. And uh, in the past, we said, okay, uh, are there any nominations and who seconds it? Uh, reading Robert's rules, an election is not an action, is not a uh, action item. It is simply an election. So one is nominated, uh, others are nominated, and then we have a vote. So, uh, 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 starting, uh, Agenda item number seven, is there a nomination for committee chair? Andrea? I nominate Jeff Cambra. Okay, Jeff Cambra has been nominated. Is there another nomination for, for chair? I nominate myself. Okay, are there any other nominations? for chair. Okay, hearing none, we will now take a roll call vote on uh, the uh, chair. So, uh, who is, we'll go around the room, who is in favor of Jeff Cambra being the next chair? Uh, Marcus Crawley, uh, no. Jeff Cambra, yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Darrell Gamble, yes. yes. Andrea Dawson, yes. Okay. Benjamin Scott, no. Jill Broadhurst, no. Uh, you said yes. You no. Said? Okay. No. Cole Sexton? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, the uh, vote is four. Let's see, one, two, three, four to three. And Jeff is the next chairman. And uh, so uh, I will finish off asking for the vice chair and then turn it over to you if you would like. That'd be great, yes. Okay, so regarding the vice chair, uh, are there any nominations for vice chair? Uh, Cole? Terrell Gamble. Okay, Terrell. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Are there any it. other? Can I make a point of order? Yes, please. His name is Terrell. Terrell, yeah. okay, I'll, so. get, I'll get used right. to it. Right, I think, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, Terrell, is there uh, any other nomination for this yeah. chair? Okay. You're on mute. Oh, he's on the phone. <laughs> he's on mute and on the phone. <laughs> Terrell, are you uh, with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Terrell, I'm uh, going to call the meeting to order here. Uh, we'd like you to be fully. I'm in present. Yeah. Continue. You're, you're conducting other business right now. Yeah, I'm present though. Okay. So uh, the uh, are there any other nominations for vice chair? Well, I nominate myself for vice chair. 
Any other nomination for vice chair? Hearing none, we'll take we'll take a roll call vote for vice chair. Marcus Crawley. Uh, no. Now we're going to um, the first nomination was Terrell. So we will first vote on Terrell for vice chair. All in favor? Well, excuse me. So I'm going to do a roll call vote on, on Terrell, Terrell for vice chair. Marcus Crawley? No. Jeff Cambra? Yes. Yes. Terrell Gamble? Yes. Okay. Andrea Dawson? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Benjamin Scott? No. Jill Broadhurst? Jill Broadhurst? No. No. Oh, okay. Cole Sexton? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Then Terrell Gamble is the next vice chair of this committee. So now I will turn over procedure to Jeff Camber. Thank you, Marcus. So moving on to agenda item number eight, I believe we're on is the annual report discussion. And uh, Marcus, uh, this is objection. Uh, the the uh, agenda item number seven went up before agenda yeah. item number oh, five. Sorry. Yes, you are correct. Thank you. So we're moving on to agenda item number five, which is the uh, Brown Act Palmer Pledge Letter. So Marcus, this was uh, indicated that you had submitted this, so you get to make the initial presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let me clarify one thing right now with Mr. John Palmer. Uh, but at the beginning, right before our meeting, John said that uh, Jeff's uh, pledge and a cease and desist letter took precedence over his. So, uh, John, do you withdraw your cease and desist letter and pledge uh, so that it's no longer on the uh, table once and for all? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not a member of the committee, so I can't put anything on the agenda or take it off, but I'm fine if you take it off and only consider Jeff's. Well, let me clarify something. It's the uh, uh, Brown Act uh, uh, allows for anybody, any person to make a... Uh, cease and desist letter and pledge. So you as a person uh, have the right to do that. So uh, are you doing that or not? So um, without arguing about the procedure here to the extent that I can remove it from the agenda, I do. Okay, I'm not talking about removing it from the agenda. It's on the agenda, and we're going to handle it today once and for all. So the question is, do you uh, rescind your challenge, or is it still live? Yeah, I'm sorry, but there is no challenge. Okay. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's correct. Okay. So we have been dealing for a number of months with the letter that John, it's not, it doesn't say John Palmer, but John sent to me, uh, and it is following the procedure of 54960.2, and, and the uh, introductory letter was a cease and desist, and then he copied uh, a model pledge and uh, so are you so 
uh, if it is indeed withdrawn, never to rise again, uh, then uh, we have disposed of it. And uh, if it is, uh, if it's still a uh, challenge to me for civil and criminal penalties, we are ready to do, to uh, handle this today. So, or is this a? Do you? Okay. Let, let, let me just be clear. Your, your I, 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 I haven't challenged anything. I provided a draft of the letter because it's a complete defense to any Brown Act irregularities that may have occurred. And so I suggested it to the committee as a way of putting this to bed with a complete defense should anybody come to the committee uh, accusing the committee of Brown Act irregularities. Whether you choose to uh, adopt the letter is, 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 your, is, is your choice, but if you do, I would recommend that you adopt the version that Jeff sent around rather than the one that I sent around, which was always a draft. Well, what we're, I'm trying to say is your letter still an active letter yes or no so i'm going to intervene here because the issue with this agenda item was submitted by you marcus and you attached the letter to it so you have the right to withdraw that you, you can do anything you want with that letter uh the letter from john uh uh challenges each of the members uh, that were on the uh, oversight committee at that time of uh, very serious charges. This says, be aware that civil and criminal penalties may apply. So we need, so we're not going to just, uh, I want to know whether civil and, and criminal penalties apply to me. So the letter and, is a draft. We don't have to adopt it. Uh, it's only a draft. Then, then why didn't we just skip it months ago? Uh, you have put the you put no. the item on the agenda, Marcus. How would you like? Do you want because, to vote to remove because it? Because I put it on there because you requested it. You said, "Are we going to have uh, uh, his a letter okay. on the next agenda?" And I said, "Yes." And then in the last meeting. When uh, we showed up to handle his letter, you said, oh, I've got a substitute uh, uh, pledge. So uh, so we put it off the agenda last minute so that we could fight for once and for all, handle it. And you're, now you're saying that, oh, it's not, it's not a problem. Not what I'm saying. So okay, if it's a problem, let's vote on it. If it's not a problem, let's uh, let's declare it that it was always a uh, trivial uh, challenge. So, Andrea. So, can we vote to take it off the agenda? We can vote to refuse. We I mean, a motion to that refuse to accept the letter. Yeah, let's do. Make it be something so that simple. Move on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I move that we refuse to accept the letter. I second it. Okay, and we accept it. Great. So we have a motion on the table to refuse John Palmer's letter. I'd like to do a roll call vote so that we all know um, this is an action item. So I want to make sure it, we need public comment on this. We should have had public comment actually before. So I don't see anybody of the general public there. So the motion is to re reject John Palmer's letter and a roll call vote. Marcus. I reject John Palmer's letter. It's a, a or nay. A or nay. Okay, so exactly what's the question again? To reject uh, John Palmer's letter. Yes, I reject John Palmer's That's letter. That's a, a, yay, yes, okay. Yep, Cambria, yes. Terrell? I abstain. Andrea Dawson? Yes. 
Benjamin Scott. Yes. Jill Broadhurst. Yes. And Cole. Abstain. Okay. So we have two abstentions and five yeses. The motion passed. Okay. Item number five is done. Item number six is the is my pledge letter. And I um I guess since I'm kind of the presenter, I think if, if everybody has read it, I'm um, you know prepared to answer any questions if it isn't clear about what was said in the letter. Okay, I move to reject <laughs> your pledge letter. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to reject this letter, and we're now into public comment. I don't see any public comments. So okay, we're moving. I, I have a comment about it. Well, we'll, we'll get to okay. the public comment. You get the you get the comment because you're a committee member, not yeah. because you're public. All right. So yes, all right, Marcus, you have the floor. Yeah. Well, while this letter pretends to uh, be reliant on Brown Act Section fifty four nine sixty point two, it quotes uh, it uh, references fifty four nine. 60.2 and uh, 54960.2 uh, states that uh, states that um, uh, an interested person may file an action uh, for um, it only if all the following conditions are met. And one of them is uh, that the first submits a cease and desist letter by postal mail and fax trans transmission to uh, the chair or the clerk or the secretary or whoever. So that would have been me. So Jeff did not send a letter via the post or the uh, facsimile transmission. And so his letter has no legal standing. So I say, let's simplify our lives and just reject his letter because it has no, it's because it's frivolous. That's, that's my comment. Okay. Andrew? So can we just take an up or down vote on your letter as it stands? And so we can go on the record on how we feel about the letter and move on and get to the meat of the of, of what our charge is. What your charge is. All right. Yeah. So I'm happy. So the only thing I wanted to do say about it is that, and it's in the, the last sentence basically of the kind of report, and that is by adopting this letter, it demonstrates its commitment to following all of the provisions contained in the act and its willingness to correct any deficiencies on its own volition without the need for a formal complaint and in order to further the goals of open government. And that's all I will say, although it is not frivolous because as John indicated that by issuing the letter, any future litigation, this, prov this provides us with a 100% defense. And there is no possibility for future litigation because nobody has followed the required procedure in a timely fashion. But can we vote yet? yes or no on this? Yes, we can on. vote. So we have a motion on the table and the motion is to either, the motion is to accept the letter. Yeah. So if you don't want to, you vote no. Right? You vote no. Vote if you don't no want to issue. If, if I reject your letter. If you reject the letter. Okay. I, okay, back to our roll call again. Marcus Crowley. I reject the letter, vote no. Okay, Jeff Cambridge, yes. 
Terrell? I'm going to abstain again. Andrea Dawson? Yes. Benjamin Scott? No. Jill Broadhurst? No. And Cole Sexton? I'm going to say so it's three no's to two yeses, so we do not accept the letter. Okay, moving on now, if I'm correct, we now are item number eight, annual report discussion. And Holdy, who is introducing this? Um, uh, I am. It says right here, Chair Crawley. Yeah, but it's only Crawley, uh, former Chair Crawley. Right. And uh, 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 I believe that uh, that Cole submitted uh, some uh, preliminary uh, documents uh, that would uh, uh, comprise part of the uh, annual report to the public. Uh, last meeting, Andrea said something that I thought was uh, particularly important, and uh, and that was, she said, uh, you know, our annual report should be reporting what the committee has done in the last year. And one of the things that we did in the last year was receive the annual audits uh, for the financial and performance audits. But of course, those financial and performance audits were for the previous fiscal year. But anyway, so we should be, so the, uh, our, what we should be uh, reporting to the public is what happened to the, uh, what's important with the committee during this last year. So uh, really, the, uh, the, the, the committee annual report should be from the fiscal year starting June the, July the 1st to July to June the 30th. And so in other words, fin finishing just a week ago or two weeks ago. And uh, I don't think we've ever done that before. I think that in the past, when we did an annual report, it said the annual report for uh, fiscal year 2021. Uh, and uh, that was uh, uh, the same nomenclature that the, uh, that the, uh, the annual audits said. So uh, I suggest that we bring it up to present time. And when we report to the public, we're reporting uh, our annual uh, fiscal year, not the uh, the previous fiscal year. So uh, I thought that that was uh, good on Andrea's part, and uh, I would like to uh, see it uh, be done that way. And I'm that just going to go ahead and finish, Mark. Uh, finish. You are interrupting me. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, and uh, so uh, if she didn't say it, she implied it enough that that's what I got. And I thought it was a good idea. And I'm uh, wondering, okay, how do we bring our annual report up to present time rather than uh, have it uh, a year and a half old or uh, two years old? So that, that's my comment. Okay, I just want to make sure I have a clarification that the, the annual report we normally think of is the one that's submitted to us that's done on the fiscal year, right? So you're suggesting that our annual report go beyond that fiscal year to talk about what else we've done so that it's more current. Right. And so okay. so there and, and to some degree we've already been doing it, you know, because uh, we say, oh, uh, this is the construction progress uh, during this last year. So we're not reporting the construction progress and other things from two years ago. We're doing we're informing the the uh, public about the latest and greatest. So I think that uh, our our annual report should reflect that. 
and uh, the, the nomenclature should reflect that. So that would be in, that you're suggesting in the title? Or is there yes, so, so I, th I think that the next annual report to the public should be FY 2324. So our BMOC, it would be 2324, including the fiscal year, the audits of, fi of fiscal year 22-23, because we, they were, it was delivered to us in 23-24. Okay, I think I understand it. Andrea, you have the floor. Okay, so sorry for interrupting you, but I, I, what I think I said, and is we first place we by statute we are required to report on the audit that is presented to us, and it's always in arrears. So, but it, what I said is that. As in the past, it is more meaningful if we do that report and we make a statement and we also report what's happening now. And that's why, and I actually looked at one slide in here and I said, so you, in other words, you would, the groundbreaking at Berkeley City College is happening now, but I said it was in the planning stages or, or it was being approved by the state during the, as it would should be reported in here, as far as what was happening in the in the year that we are required to report. Another thing that I said is that I felt like it was important to set, make a statement about the audit itself. And so I wrote it and actually, but I, I would, thought we might project it up here, but I'll just read it to you. The 22-23 financial and performance audits for the Peralta 2006 Measure A and 2018 Measure G program were completed on December 30th, 2023. It was email distributed by Peralta CCD to the BMOC members on January 5th, 2024. At the March 13th BMOC meeting, the financial and performance audit findings were presented to the BMOC by Ben Levitt of the audit firm CW. DL, DL for their consideration and discussion. And I think that should go on the next to last page or it could go somewhere else in this report. But the other thing that I wanted to bring up about on this report is that um, I know Paul is, you know, a new member who's done such a good job of putting this together as a boilerplate and um, and my other suggestion is, is that we use the um, report that comes from the program manager and Sharon Serrano is online here. And that report was given to us in, um, I believe, um, January of this year or last year, uh, because that was as soon as it could happen. And if it wasn't then, I might have the dates wrong, but basically we had some some meetings that we didn't have enough people that were attending in person, so it was not presented as soon as it could have been. But that expresses what's happened in the last two years. And there are other reports that have gone before the district that we could take information out of, like we have in the past. If you go back and look at our past report, it it might be lengthy, you know, and a lot of reading, but it actually it goes past to present. And I'm suggesting that we do that again this year. And I'm, you know, perfectly happy that it's in this this um, this format. And I'm happy to work on it so we can get it done because we've been on this for a while now. And so I don't know who who has been spending time on this, if it's been you, Marcus Crowley, that's that's had input on this, or if it's Paul doing this pretty much himself with a little bit of, I, I'm not sure, you know, so. To a large degree, it's been Paul. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay, any other comments? So I'd like to make suggestions because we do have a website subcommittee, and so I'd like 
I think the board is given the committee is giving directions to the subcommittee if they could prepare a final draft so that I could put this on as an action item for next meeting. Can I make a bold proposal? Uh, uh, okay. I see. So we can't have four people on the committee because that's uh, it, who's it, on the committee now. We have only two, right? Uh, right. Uh, actually, you were on the committee also, but uh, we have. So you were you attended the first meeting, you, me, and Cole. And uh, since then, Cole, we haven't really had another meeting. I've just monitored uh, what Cole progress he's making because uh, if, if he's just uh, making a little progress, there's really nothing to talk about. Okay, so no decision making. So, uh -huh. how about if we solve this? Because now that I'm the chair, I shouldn't be on the committee. So, I'd be happy to withdraw from the website committee, leave it to the three of you with your, with these directions, and to come back next time as an action item so that we can close this report out. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, that works. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to participate. Great. If I have some ideas. Okay, thank you. Moving on to agenda. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, I I just wanted to suggest that the principal goal of the committee is to opine on whether the bond funds were spent in accordance with uh, Prop 39, and and I think that while it makes sense for the committee to uh, discuss its sort of subsequent work, I I think it's potentially problematic for the committee to opine on expenditures that haven't yet been reviewed by the auditor. So if the committee issues an, a, an opinion, I would have that opinion be coterminous with the auditor's opinion and limit any discussion of the subsequent work to a to a narrative that that, oh. that, that doesn't contain an opinion. Totally agree. I think that I think that was my understanding. Yeah, totally agree. All right. And, and this Super. will so we'll have, we will be able to look to make sure that the report reflects what we we're actually opining on and what is just descriptive or narrative. Right. Excellent. Great. Thank you for the comment. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number nine on the agenda, website categories chart discussion. And... Oh, um, this one has I'm, your name on it. Right. I have a motion. Can we uh, table this until next month? I still need to talk with Chair Crowley. Uh, That's excuse fine. Me, with, my, <laughs> with Marcus uh, about this because, um, yeah, it's not. Right, we'll I, just, I haven't made progress. Yeah. All right. So this will be a continuation of this agenda onto next month's meeting. Just and, to make sure I was Or going. whenever <laughs> our next meeting might occur. Right. So. Yes, Andrea. Is there an opportunity to expand that committee too? Because I, like I said, I spent quite a bit of time looking at this, the website and I think it's pretty darn good. And I, I there's always room for improvement, but what I um, would like to participate, there's a few things that I saw on it, but honestly, I, I think all the information's there. And so I, I think that we're spending a lot of time on this website, and I, so I, I'm happy to participate because I'd like to understand and participate. Um, since you're the new person and just learning, sure. like really what, what might and should be in, in a, a, a good. There's been a lot of improvements. Yeah, yeah, there have. Yeah, that's what I say. So. I'm not sure what else we want to prove. <laughs> Again, this is why I wanted to table it for, for okay. next month. Okay, so who's on the oh. committee now? Just the two of you, Marcus so we can have a third one. Andrea, you said you'd like to be on the committee, then you can be on that subcommittee as well. Okay, unless someone else. And I don't see any, pub, no public. We don't have any public up there to the best of my knowledge. Okay, on to agenda item 10. Committee me, uh, committee member Andrew Dawson's work plan. And uh, this is an update. Are you updating the original request? No, um, I'm not. 
I still would like to consider that um, we, it, it, it's a work plan. And I, I think it's always subject to change depending on what's coming before us. But basically it really just gives us a little discussion. I mean, a, a roadmap to what we intend to do. And you know, one of my um, thoughts on it is that we don't need 12 meetings a year. And so it's an information item again, and it could come back to a next meeting to basically when we put it as an action item to propose eight meetings a year. And if, like, I'll give you a for instance on it. I know at one point we talked about maybe having uh, a deeper dive in each one of the campuses, like just do one at several meetings, you know, like spread them out over the meetings in the year. I'm not quite so sure that that's necessary. Typically a program manager can give you a good overview um, um, on in one meeting a year if we if we give Sharon Serrano 45 minutes and and we can go from campus to campus and they can tell us what's happening at Laney, what's happening at that College of Alameda, Merritt College, and Berkeley City College, the large projects and the small projects and if that comes along with a report that is the expenditures report and all the flow charts of the timeline of the construction, that actually, the financial part of it can be at another meeting. So I would um, I'd like to look at this some more and come back with that sort of proposal. So we're doing financial and narrative at maybe two separate meetings. So, um, and I think it would be more efficient. And you and Jill were on that subcommittee. That's correct. So the two, does, do you want to meet one more time to prepare a final draft of this for us? You want to do that, Jill? That's fine. Great. So hopefully this will come back as an action item then for the next meeting. Yeah. That would be great. Okay, we're on to agenda. No public. So we're on to agenda item 11, which is new business. Does anybody have any new business they would like to bring up? Oh, sure, Cameron. I don't know if this qualifies under new business, but uh, going to uh, what Andrea brought up about not having to meet uh, 12, you know, 12 times a year. Uh, would it be just beneficial if we if we didn't meet uh, for 12 times a year, given the violations, the remote attendances, and just, you know, not having to set aside one day for an entire month just to make sure that, you know, you're present or, you know, have to set up, you know, have to set up a rig somewhere to make sure that you're reporting in uh, remotely. Uh, I was wondering if that was something that we could action today, possibly, or if not, maybe sometime next month when we meet again. So you wouldn't be able to add part of the workflow. Yeah. That you're proposing. It seems like they're, they're going. Yeah, there's no say there. It's yeah, yeah, a bit of a co yeah, kind of coalesce there. Yeah. No, they yeah. said we can we can take any action tonight. Okay, it can be agendized for a future meeting. Okay, can we do that for next month? Yeah. Okay. Actually, we're gonna have you're gonna incorporate that mm -hmm. into Andrea's work plan. Would that be something that would be incorporated into her into their work plan? Yes, I'd be I'd be going for it. Great. So if the three of you can get it all, it would be one agenda item then for us, which would be great. Okay. Okay. Looking at the clock, if there is no other new business, it is 7:20, and I believe we can adjourn this meeting. Thanks everybody for your participation. Enjoy the nice weather.